So this is Matthew chapter 18, the scripture for August 18th. Uh, Matthew's fourth discourse here in his gospel involves how to live together in a community that's focused on God's kingdom. It's a specific type of community Matthew's talking about, and this is uh, the vision Matthew has for the early church. So this discourse comes after the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5-7, to which is focused on individual responses to God's kingdom and God's grace. Uh, it's after Matthew 10, which is the second great discourse, the commissioning of the disciples, empowering them to share the message of the gospel. And it's after Matthew 13, which is the third great discourse, which begins to describe what the kingdom of heaven looks like using parables. So here we've got, what does the community of the kingdom of heaven look like in Matthew 18? So Jesus begins by talking about how God's kingdom sees greatness and measures greatness very differently than the world does. Uh, humility and hospitality are central to what God considers great, and they're central also, therefore, to the holy community, to the point that children who have little power in the world are seen as great in God's kingdom. Children offer great humility and great hospitality. Just the other day, I was at Target with my two-and-a-half-year-old, uh, and she loves getting stickers at Target. That's one of the things that gives her great joy. Um, and she got a, a set of five stickers. With those five stickers, she gave one to me, she gave one to Mommy, uh, she put one on herself, and then she gave one to a lady that she just passed by in Target. Great humility, great hospitality. That's what the kingdom of heaven looks like, is being willing to share even with a stranger. Now, Please note that children are not considered great in the kingdom of heaven based on their potential. This is a really important thing to note. They're great now, as they are. The way that a friend of mine puts it is that the, the Holy Spirit does not have a height requirement to get on this ride. The Holy Spirit is able to influence people even as young as children. I think that, that we tend to focus on children as being the future of the community of God, but Jesus' focus is instead on them being the present of the community. Now, that doesn't mean they carry all the burdens of the community, but that means that they're uniquely positioned to offer a prophetic word to the community and to model what community life looks like in God's kingdom. Causing others to stumble is to be avoided at all costs in the holy community, but, but more than this, Reconciliation, after an offense is given, not if, but after, because we are going to give an offense. Reconciliation after an offense must be pursued via multiple steps which value both the injured party and the offender. I think that's really unique in Christianity. Uh, we're not called first to, to air our laundry on Twitter, right? However, if the offender doesn't listen to private overtures and private interventions, then we may need to escalate to a more public overture, a more public intervention. Uh, treating someone as a, as a Gentile or a tax collector, by the way, doesn't mean scorning them or, or canceling them or, or, or something like that. Rather, it means seeing them as needing the community's love because they're not part of the community. So they don't get to have a say in what the community does. They're in need of the community's love and in the, the community's ministry. Now, what does forgiveness look like? When, when somebody offends another person and, and there's reconciliation offered, forgiveness extended, what does that look like? Well, at its best, it's an inversion of something we see in Genesis 4. Genesis 4 uh, goes through the Cain and Abel story and then tracks some of the, the descendants of Cain. Cain's great, great, great grandson is a man named Lamech. And Lamech has a certain vision of the world in Genesis 4, 23 and 24, proclaiming his desire for vengeance against anyone who wrongs him. Not seven times, but 77 times. See, the promise of the holy community is that we're not called to forgive someone seven times, but 77 times, or seven times seven. This refers back to Lamech's, uh, uh, Lamech's vengeance desire. Instead of seeing the world as threats to overcome and wrongs to avenge, we're called to see the world through God's eyes, who forgives. To drive the point home, Jesus ends the chapter with a parable. Uh, the parable of the unmerciful servant, it's called. Uh, this servant was forgiven 10,000 talents. That's the equivalent of 150,000 years of, ra of wages, if you take it literally. Now, 10,000 talents can also refer to an uncountable amount of wealth that this servant owed the, the master, that he was indebted to the master. Uh, to receive forgiveness from such a debt 
And then to fail to forgive a debt of 100 denarii, 100 days wages. See, that's not small, but compared to the 10,000 talents, it's comparatively worthless. That reveals the wickedness of the servant. As forgiven people ourselves, we must practice true forgiveness of others who wrong us, because we have been infinitely forgiven ourselves. Now I wonder, how are children treated in your faith community? Are they treated as annoying distractions or as the greatest in God's kingdom? That's all for Matthew 18. Tomorrow, the 19th of August, we'll look at Matthew chapter 19. May God bless you in your reading of Scripture.